praise him enough for him. Lift his name up. We won't lift our hands up enough for him. We won't shout enough for him. If you don't like shouting, you won't like heaven. There will be a lot of shouting up there. Oh, so I hear you can come back to the show. I look for it. But I, most importantly, I, I'm looking for a day that I'll be able to lay that armor off that Brother Rick talked about. So, Breastplate of righteousness, shield of faith, home of salvation, all those things. Being able to lay back, I don't have to worry about them anymore. Not having to battle, not having to face anything. I want to do all my suffering down here. Yeah. I don't want to. I don't want to have to face anything I would ever do. When this life is over. I plan on not having another pain, another sorrow, another tear, nothing. He's promised me that. And if we stay on the firing line today and in the future when we put that armor to use, I'll be able to take it off one day and relax and rejoice. We'll praise Him, give Him perfect praise. We can't praise Him enough here. We can't praise Him the right way. I, I can't talk to him the right way. The Bible says we know not even how to pray. But that the Spirit, that it makes intercessions yeah. for us. And it, it groans, the Bible says. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know how to reach him. I don't. But I'm glad that I've got something down on the inside. And if you don't have it, you can get it. Yeah. That, that'll be the first prayer that he'll hear from you. Is the one that you ask him to forgive you. But uh, our, our mind is on... Uh, the book of Chronicles and uh, the 34th chapter of the second book of Chronicles. Uh, I don't really know where we're going with this, but this is what the Lord's put on our mind. And Lord, we've been reading back and forth through the book of Chronicles. It, Chronicles means uh, basically just an account. Uh, it's just the history of uh, those kings and uh, the many people that were mentioned in the book. It's just a, basically an account of what they did. And, Jewish tradition says that it was written by Ezra. And some of your scholars argue that it was possibly written by Samuel. I don't know. All I know is that God penned it. And I don't really care who wrote it down because God wrote it and that makes it true. So we believe the Bible to be the infallible Word of God. Yeah. If it steps on your toes, that's your fault. Don't take it up with me. Take it up with God. But I'm thankful that... Uh, as we read through this, we, we come to, to see a lot of different things that were going on in the, the church back then. Uh, Josiah says that he was uh, took reign over Israel, or, or not Israel, but Jerusalem, Judah, uh, whenever he was eight years old. Can you imagine that? Think about that. We can't even legally vote for somebody that's eight years old. But, uh, he took over as the king, the king of Judah, at eight years old. And he'd just take, he didn't, he didn't have a, a nice, beautiful kingdom handed over to him either. Uh, you can read in the, the previous chapters, you can read in the book of Kings and, and see what was left for him. But the king, previous king before him, Amon, was uh, just a little bit worse than the one before him, Manasseh. But Manasseh, it said that he, he reigned more, longer than any other king. The Bible said that he reigned for 55 years and that... Uh, whenever he was there, that he, he wanted to do things, Brother June, that uh, he said that he wanted his name uh, to be known all throughout the city. And he compared it to how God wanted his name uh, to be all throughout Israel. But uh, Manasseh instead, the Bible says that he did that which was not pleasing unto God. Yeah. And he took it a step further. He did so much it was his will. It was what he wanted, basically, to bring down that kingdom, to, to get so far away from God that, that, that they may not even be able to get back to him. But his eyes were open. They came to him and they, uh, they chained him up. They put him down and uh, he began to humble himself, the Bible says, and he called out to the Most High God. 
A man that I didn't want anything to do with God. This is how the God works. That you can want nothing to do with him for your entire life. But he loves you so much. He's so long-suffering that whenever you get down to that one place, that you can call on him. He's there. Yeah. He's there tonight. I don't know where you stand in your life. I don't know what you've got going on. I don't know what troubles you're facing. But Manasseh, he was facing troubles. He was getting ready to be killed. And he called upon God. And he humbled himself. And God spared him. The next king that took over after him was Amon. And it said that he did that which was not right before God. Uh, but the difference uh, in him and Manasseh, uh, the Bible says that he humbled not himself uh, before God. Uh, and that whenever the, uh, the people, they began to conspire against him, uh, and they came to him, uh, and they had him killed. Uh, but whenever they had him killed, uh, the town had those people killed. Uh, and that's how we get where we are right now. Uh, that Josiah, uh, being eight years old, uh, uh, that he took over as the ruler uh, of Judah. Uh, and whenever he became king, uh, it said that he did something uh, a little bit different. Uh, uh, you can read uh, that in the eighth year uh, of his reign, uh, he began to do something uh, that we all should do. Uh, it said that he began to seek God. Uh, uh, when there is nothing uh, in this world. Uh, there is nothing that you'll ever get uh, that if you don't seek God, uh, that it'll happen for you. Uh, you can have a lot of things uh, in your life. Uh, you can have money. Uh, you can have kingdoms. Uh, you can have all the different things. Uh, but unless you seek God, uh, it's all going to burn away. Every bit of it. It writes about Josiah and it says that he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord. That he walked in the ways of David his father. Like that. And that he declined neither to the right hand or to the left hand. Declined neither to the left or to the right. Sounds to me like he went straight. Yeah. Right ahead. Yeah. Didn't turn back and look at other things. <laughs> but it said that in the eighth year of his reign, he began to seek God. Began to seek Him. And in the twelfth year, <clears throat> so for four years he sought God. Things started to change for him. Oh, yeah. Started to work for him. And you see that in the twelfth year of his reign, it says that he began to purge Judah. He began to purge it of all the idols, uh, all the different uh, uh, gods that they'd set up. Uh, began to purge it uh, of all the terrible things uh, that Manasseh had let happen. Uh, to that kingdom. Uh, he went in there. Uh, Brother Judy wasn't going to have it. Uh, he'd sought God. Uh, and he sought to please Him. Uh, and he went in. Uh, and he took all the idols. Uh, he took all the groves. Uh, he took all the different things. The statues of Balaam. Uh, and all the different things that they brought up. Uh, and it says that he took them and he burned them. Uh, but he didn't just burn those up. Uh, that wasn't enough. He dug up the priests and then offered the sacrifices and he burned up their bones. Yeah. And it said that he took their ashes and he poured it over top of them. He was wanting to get rid of every little bit of evil that there was in that kingdom. That's right. Wanted to uh, be rid of it. Didn't want anything to do with it. Uh, he wanted to clean it up for God. Uh, you can read six years later. Uh, six years it was uh, that he took. Uh, and he went not just right there in Judah. Uh, and you can read that he went to Manasseh. Uh, and you can read that he went to the other cities. Uh, uh, purging uh, uh, them of all the idols. Uh, and then it said six years later. Six years later. He decides he's going to build back the kingdom. He's going to build back the church house. The temple. My goodness, when he went in there. Bad shape. It was a mess. If you leave a church house.
house. Don't do any cleaning up in it. For just one year, you're going to have a mess. For 57 years, that temple didn't get any bit of love in it. Didn't have anything in it. Nobody went and visited it. Nobody worshipped in it. Nobody did anything there. He began, decided he's going to build it back. And he, he appointed some people to build it back, Brother Jim. And whenever they were building it back, uh, you know what? Uh, a lot of these churches are missing. Uh, they're missing something today. Uh, and not this. Uh, not this little church. Uh, but church houses all over. Not God's church. Uh, but people that are setting up in a building, uh, uh, calling themselves things, uh, uh, pretending to be what they are. Open the book. 
I don't care how much money you put in the plate. I don't care who your grandpa is. I don't know what you do in your life, and I don't care. You better serve God, or you'll open up your eyes in hell. That's the truth of the matter. The whole duty of man is to fear God and to keep His commandments. That's the whole duty of God. Come on. You can make your choice to do whatever you want to do. I can't make you change. I can't save you. These brothers can't save you. There's nothing that, you know, if we could, my goodness, I'd wrap you all up. Yeah. I wouldn't let go. I'd go to my mom's and I'd wrap her up. I'd go to my brother, I'd wrap him up. Sure. I'd spend all my time going around collecting people. If I could save them, but I can't. I open the book. Read it for yourself. Prove the truth. It doesn't do you any good if it just sits on the coffee table. Amen. It doesn't do you any good. It won't help you a bit. I could get up here and, I, you know, I could preach whatever I want to preach, or, or, or not preach, but I can say whatever I want to say. And half of you would go home and believe it. You won't go home and read it for yourself. Prove the truth, the Bible says. Some of you would come up to me afterwards and say, Brother Trevor, that wasn't right. Because you're studied and you're, you're, you're caught up. You're read, well read. Some of you wouldn't even dig in. I said, well, Brother Trevor said I could do that. that. That's good enough for me. I'm not the judge. I don't want to be the judge. I don't want to. But you know what the Bible says? You've been judged already. You've been judged already. But there's coming. I, you know, I think of this sign every time that I come in here. Yeah. It's appointed unto man once to die. And after this, the judgment. Yeah. That's right. You're preaching your own funeral right now. <laughs> How you live daily, you're preaching your funeral. You'll live however you want to live. And you're allowed to do that. He loves you enough that He'll let you do whatever it is you want to do. You can do, you can be so far from God, you can forget all about Him. It says that He'll allow that. It says that He'll even cause it in another place. But He'll allow you to believe a lie and be damned. And go on living however you want to live. But He loves you so much that He gave you a way out. Yeah. He gave you a way out. I'm so glad He gave me a way out. Yeah. I love Him tonight. And more than anything, I want to see Him. Uh, I want to look upon His face, Brother Jack. More than anything. Travers. People say, I want to see Mom there. I want to see Dad there. I want to talk to so-and-so. I want to listen to the songs. I want to talk to Abraham. I want to see my Lord and my Savior. And I want to thank Him for what He did for me at Calvary. That He loved me so much. That whenever He hung there and He bled and He died, that He did it for me. That's right. Personal salvation. He died for me. And He died for you, and you, and you, and you, and you. That's Each right. and every one of you, He died for you. Uh, he took your place. Sure did. There's not a thing you can do to save yourself. You can be the goodest, nicest, most well-moral person that you've ever met. I've seen so many people that I would almost tell you they're getting cheated out of a place in heaven. They're so good. I sat in church with a man and didn't even know he wasn't saved. For so long he sat there and all of a sudden he comes up and getting baptized. I didn't know any better. That's how good some people are. But you know if he had died before he made that confession? Jesus said that if you die in your sins, where I am, you cannot go. That's right. Where I am, you cannot go. It's that real tonight. Yes, 
Yes, it is. Yes, it is. It's personal. Yes. You ought to make it personal. Do you know him tonight? Does he know you? That's what's most important. Does he know you? Will you say, well, preacher, you say that he knows each and every one of us. He does. Now, he's seeking more than just knowing who you are. And he wants you to know him Amen. more than just by knowing who he is. Well, I was brought up in church. I know who he is. I know that Jesus died. Have you ever confessed it? Have you ever admitted? Have you made a confession with your mouth? Have you forgiven in your heart? Have you been forgiven? Has the blood of Jesus blotted out your sins? He wants to get intimate with you. Yeah, praise the Lord. There is nothing. You'll never know a love like this love. You'll never know intimacy like what Jesus Christ and God in heaven want to have with you. You'll not know anything better than his love. He wants to get personal with you. He wants to know all about you. He wants whenever you get down in the lowest of valleys and you think there's no way out, you know what He wants you to do? He wants you to call out on Him. He wants to hear from you. I've got a lot of good friends. They don't want to hear from me in my time of trouble. He wants to hear from me. He wants to hear from you. He wants to know what's going on in your life. Uh, will you say, well, he knows it. He does know it all. Uh, but he said that you receive not uh, for you ask not. There you go, yeah. bro. That's it. He loves you. He loves you tonight. If you could just comprehend his love and how much that he loves you. You may love your mom, you may love your dad, you may love your son, you may love your daughter, and you think, you know, I, I've, I've got a brand new baby. And I look at him and I think, I can't love anything more than that. And I look at my other son and I say, well, yeah, I love them equally. And I look at my wife and I love her more than that. That's how it's supposed to be. Yeah. And then I think about what he did for me. Yeah. And I thought, I didn't think there was any way I could love someone more than I love my wife. Think like about it. But you know what he did for me that she, she couldn't? Right. He saved my dying soul. Yeah. Man. He took my place. He died for me on Calvary. Yeah. He laid down his life so that I could be forgiven. Laid down his life. He loves you so much tonight. I just want you to know how much he loves you. How much he means to me. If I could bottle up and give it to you, I would. I wish there was a way, Brother June, that I could write down the words of what it takes and give it to people. I can't do it. All I can do is preach his word that he died for you, that he took your place. He's forgiven you of all your sins if you only accept it. It's a free gift tonight. Do what you will with it. Amen. You'll make a decision tonight. I'm not going to hold you all night. I could, I could preach and preach and preach right now. I feel good. I love him. I feel good tonight. Praise the Lord. Yeah. I believe that, bro. But you're going to make a decision. Here in just a little bit. Yeah. You're going to decide whether you're going to serve him, make that mouse confession, Amen. or you're going to decide that you don't want anything to do with him. Well, that's not what I mean when I do that. If you don't confess him with your sins, you're saying in your heart that there is no God. That's scripture. You're saying in your heart there is no God. What is he worth to you? What is your soul worth to you? If you could gain the whole world, if you could gain the whole world and lose your soul, what would you give in exchange for your soul? What would you give in exchange for your soul? What, what is it worth to you tonight? You give it.
everything that you had. Everything that you had, you give it all up. Yes. And it still wouldn't be enough. He paid a price that no man could pay. You could have gathered up all the gold in Fort Knox and it wouldn't have forgiven you for your sins. Solomon had it all. He had everything he ever wanted. God gave it to him. Gave it to him. But he realized that he needed something else. He needed something else. The gold, the silver, the the horses, the the, the, the castles, the all the different things that he could have had, or that, that he did have, not that he could have had, but that he did have, he said that it was all vanity. Every bit of it was vanity. A vexation of spirit, he said. That translates to chasing after the wind. I don't know where it starts. I don't know where it ends. You can chase it all day long. You'll never catch it. It'll run circles around you. You'll never catch it. He realized that the whole duty of man was to fear God and to keep His commandments. Amen. Yeah. It'll all be worth it. It'll all be worth it. Amen. You'll not regret a mile that you've walked. Now, you won't talk to anybody in this room uh, uh, that's a Christian tonight, Brother Jim, uh, uh, that'll tell you that they wish they'd waited a little bit longer. There's not a single one that will say that I wish I'd have waited, but there was something I wanted to do. They'll say, I wish I'd have got in it sooner. Amen. I wish I'd have got in it sooner. That's what they'll tell you. Because He means the world. If you've got Him down in here, He means everything. He means everything. He stands at the door knocking tonight, and it's up to you whether you open the door. That's right. Or 